What's up my friends, welcome back! Today's video will be a little bit different. It will involve a lot of theory. You see, I want to show you how to program and how to work with FPGAs. But FPGA stands for Field Programmable Gate Array. So we'll have to see what is a logic gate. So in this video I'll show you the types of logic gates and how to use them. Also a little bit of the internal structure of a logic gate and maybe some flip flops. Once we know how logic gates work, we'll start learning some Verilog. And if we know Verilog, we can program our FPGA. So guys, let's see some logic gates, so let's get started! This project is brought to you by JLC PCB, which is a manufacturer of quick PCB prototypes for more than 10 years, and is the site that I use for all of my PCBs. Once designed, upload your Gerbil files on the GLC PCB site. Get a full review of the PCB, select your desired settings and order the PCB for amazing prices. I've ordered 10 of my prototype PCBs for only $2 and received those in 6 days. Crazy, right? So order your quality PCB and make your projects look a lot more professional. What's up my friends, welcome back! As I said in the intro of this video, we will finally learn a bit about FPGAs, how they work and how to program them. But first, since FPGA stands for Field Programmable Gate Arrays, we should start from the beginning and first learn what are logic gates. Here we have a table of the most common logic gates. This will be the name of the gate, how we write the function of that gate on paper, the symbol and the true table. The most simple is the NAP gate, or sometimes called inverting gate. The output of this module is inverted to the input. Each time you see a circle at the output of any gate or a bar on top of the logic function, that means that the gate is inverted. Here I have the SN74LS6N NOT gate integrated chip. It has 6 inverting gates. Now in digital, logic signals are 1s and zeros, where 0 is the lowest value and 1 is the highest. We will work with ground and 5 volts. I supply the chip and connect an LED at one of the inverting outputs. Since this IC can give the high values, a pull up of 1k is needed between the output and 5 volts. Now using this push button I connect ground representing a digital zero to the input and as you can see the LED turns on, since the signal is inverted and we have a 1 at the output. Then I apply 5 volts to the input and the LED turns off. So this is just a simple logic inverter. Next we have the end gate and this is the symbol for this module. Now we should learn what a true table is. I know that this is very basic, but if you are new to logic gates, you will definitely need to know about true tables. This table will show the output value according to the combination of the inputs. In the case of the inverting gate, it is very simple. When the input is low, the output is high and vice versa. Now in case of the AND gate, we have two inputs or more and only one output. And this is the true table for this module. When any of the inputs or both are low, the output will be low. Only when both inputs are high, the output is high as well. No matter how many inputs has your AND gate, the output will only be high when all of the inputs are high. Here I have the CD4081BE integrated chip that has 4 AND gates. I supply 5 volts and ground, connect an LED to the output and add a pull down to each of the inputs of the first AND gate. Then I connect one push button between the input and 5 volts. So each time I press one of the buttons the input will be high and low in the rest of the time. So as you can see if I only press one of the push buttons the output is still low. Only when both inputs are high the output is high as well. Now this is the simplest AND gate with only two inputs. You could buy one with more inputs or just merge two double input ends together and make a 3 input one or a 4 or a 5 or any amount of inputs but you should know that this combination will add a delay each time you add a new gate in series. The next gate is very simple. It's the same end gate but with an inverted output as you can see here with this circle. 
so that means that the truth table is reversed. In this case the output is always 1 and 0 only when both inputs are high. Next we have the OR gate. As the name of this module, the output will be one input or the other. This is the true table of the OR gate and as you can see each time any of the inputs is high, the output is high as well. It doesn't matter if you have 5 inputs at low and only one at high, if one of the inputs is high, the output will be high as well. So for this example, I've used the 74LS32 chip that has 4 OR gates. Supply 5 volts and ground and add the push button at the input just as in the other examples. Anytime one of the inputs is pressed, the output is high. Now the NOR gate is the same but with inverted output. You could create a NOR or an AND or any inverted gate just by placing a NOT gate at the output of any gate. Finally, we have the XOR and the XNOR gates with these two tables. For the XOR gate, the output is low anytime all of the inputs are the same. If the inputs are different, the output is low and in case of an XOR, well, just the opposite. Ok guys, so now we know the most basic logic gates, but what we can do with these gates? Ok, so here I have the 74HC57 4N chip and this is a so called flip flop. We have 4 basic types of flip flops. We have the set reset one or so called SR, we have the JK, the D and the T and these are the excitation tables for each one of them. Ok let's see how the SR is made and what this flip flop does. Using the logic gates before we can create an SR latch very easy. All we need are two NOR gates. The first NOR output is called Q and the second inverted Q. The top input is reset and the bottom is called set. This is the true table of the NOR gate as seen before. Before we power up the circuit everything is low and paint it with blue. I will paint high signals with red so it will be easier to understand. If all of the inputs are low, according to the true table the output of 00, 0 will be a 1. But this one is connected to the input of the second NOR gate, so its output will be still 0. So without changing the inputs, Q will be high and it will stay high till the next input change and that's very important since that is the job of a latch. The bottom NOR gate has the inputs 1 and 0, so the output is still a 0. Now let's apply a high pulse at the reset pin. The input is now 1 and 0 and the output will also drop at 0 according to the true table. But the output of the first is the input of the second, so now the second has two low inputs so the output of the inverted Q will be high. Now if I activate the set pin we will have a 1 and a 0, so the output will drop once again to 0. If we don't care about the inverted Q output, the system output is very easy. Press the set input and turn it high and it will stay high till you press the reset and turn it low. Ok so I don't have an SR latch but I have this basic flip flop. In this case the output will change at each clock falling edge and depending on the input value. When we have a falling edge of the clock, if the input is low the output will be low as well and if the input is high it will be high till the next clock falling edge. Pretty easy right? The RS latch is a very common module and it is used in any sort of logic equations. Inside each logic gate it's made out of transistors. As an example, here we have the schematics for an AND and OR gates, with two inputs made with MPN transistors. Consider the transistors as a normal switch activated with a 1 and deactivated with a 0. In case of this double input AND, we have 5 volts, then our output, then the two transistor in series and then ground. If I activate just one of these two switches the current flow won't be possible. Only when I activate both of them and that makes this circuit an AND gate. In case of the OR gate the transistors are placed in parallel so now any of the transistors could close the circuit. If I activate the A transistor current could flow through this path and if I activate the B through this path. And if both are activated the output is still high and that's how an OR gate works. 
Ok guys, before we end this basic intro to the logic world, I want to talk about multiplexers, which will appear in any RTL diagram of any simple circuit. This is the symbol of a multiplexer, also called a MUX. They usually have 2 to the n amounts of inputs, so we have 2, 4, 16 and so on. On one side we have the inputs, on the other the output and on the bottom we have the selector pins. Let's say that we have an 8 input MUX. We apply the binary input at the selector pins and by that we will have one of the 8 inputs at the output, where 001 is the first input, 010 the second, 011 the third and so on as in this table. So that easy with only 3 signals we can select any of the 8 inputs. This module is also very common in logic circuits. Well guys, now we know the basic but very very basics of the logic world. Next, we will see how to work with logic's functions as boolean algebra, how to simplify the functions using the Carnot tables and then we will pass to Verilog, which is not a programming language but a logic circuit describing one. Once we know Verilog, we can start programming our FPGA and see some examples using the Quartu software. Stay tuned for future parts of this logic series videos. Check the links below for my webpage electronoops.com for more details and photos, more schematics of the internal structure of logic gates, stick diagrams, RTL viewer and so on. Also, if you would like to support this kind of tutorials, check my Patreon page. I really need your help and continue with this kind of videos. I would really appreciate that guys. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If so, don't forget to click the like button like crazy and share this video with your friends. If you have any question about this video or any other, just leave it in the comment section below or my Q&A page. Also, don't forget to subscribe and watch all of my other great tutorials. And remember, if you consider helping my projects, check my Patreon page as well. Thanks again and see you later guys.